Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today, we're going to be reacting to Is Jesus God? I made Didad versus Anis Shorosh. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. The reference is John chapter 10 verse 30. Now, you know, if I ask, you will have the chance to ask questions, my dear brothers. Please sit down. Would you please sit down? I'm sorry, we're going to take questions later. We're not having interruptions now. Please, would you sit down now? Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Didat. Yes, sir. Stuart. I am silence please I am I am reading from my head and my brother Shorosh just confirmed it that it is John chapter 10 verse 30 now the context you see in 40 years for 40 years I have been talking to people and when this verse is quoted that, that Jesus said I and my father are one the verse is there in the Bible you can't contradict that. I'm asking what is the context? And believe me, in 40 years, I have not come across a single learned man of Christendom, a single man in 40 years, who could give me the context. Yeah, you can open the book, yes, by opening the book. But no man in my life, 40 years now, no Christian with the name could give me the context. You, ha you have to open the book. Without opening the book, you'll never be able to give you the context. Now, let me give you the context. You see? The context is verse, starting from verse 23. It says, Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews around about him, means they surrounded him, and said, How long does that make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They're alleging that he's talking ambiguously. He's not putting forth his claim clear enough. That's a charge, a false charge. Because we know he didn't speak ambiguously. He put forth his claim that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah. But the Jews want to pick up a fight. They didn't like his preaching. Him calling them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you wicked and adulterous generation, you fools, you snakes. Would you like to hear people addressing you like that? And the Jews were not a people to forget in a hurry. So, they find the man alone, they surround him, brandishing finger in his face. Come on, tell us. Why don't you tell us? They want to pick up a fight with him, so they can work themselves into a frenzy and give him a good bashing. Get their own back. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish said, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. 28, verse 28. Verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30, I and my father are one. In this, to see that once the man has accepted faith, he remains in faith. I as the teacher sees to, see to that, as well as God Almighty sees to that. In purpose, we are one. But the Jews were looking for trouble. And if you're looking for trouble, you, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. So they picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Kufa. Because that thou being a man makest thyself a god. You are a man, you're claiming to be God. There's another false charge. First false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Now, another false charge that you're claiming to be God. That's the Jews alleged. The Christian agreed with the Jews. They said he did make such a claim, but he was entitled to it. Let us hear what Jesus says. The Jews say he blasphemed. The Christians say he did, but it is no blasphemy because he was entitled to. What does Jesus say? He says, is it not written in your law? Verse 31. Is it, verse 32, is it not written in your law, law means the Torah, 
I said, ye are gods. Ye, you are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, I mean the prophets are called gods in our language, man. The prophets. God Almighty speaks to Moses and he says, Behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. In the book of Psalms, 82nd Psalm, verse 6, it says, Ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. That's the genius of the Jewish language. That when a person is called God, he is not God. Like in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the Bible says, And the devil is the god of this world. Is he God? The devil, shaitan. No, this is your language. This means he's in control, so you say he's God. Moses is God to Pharaoh, and you Jews are all gods. That is the genius of the Jewish language. Now, you can't say, confer divinity on that. I said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, and the scripture cannot be broken, means you can't contradict me. Say ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world, that thou blasphemest, because I said, I'm the Son of God, which is nothing, man. God has got sons by the tons in our community, in our language. Why are you trying to find fault with me when I'm only saying I'm the Son of God, when others are called gods? The verse statement Brother Shorosh referred to from my book, what is his name? I took the trouble to give him all my books. All the ammunition I have, I send it to him. He asked for it, I send everything. All that I have written. Everything, all the facts are given in black and white. I said, now you can work from this. It's easier to answer. Once you have it in black and white before you, you know my arguments beforehand. I was not afraid. Because I know none of these arguments can really be, intellectually can be contradicted. Listen. God Almighty says, in the Quran now, another test is given. Says, Most certainly Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, is no more than an apostle. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. And his mother was a virtuous woman, a saintly woman. And they both had food. So, what's exceptional about that? We all eat food, don't we? No, this is in reference to the idea that they are gods or supernatural. The Roman Catholics call Mary the mother of God. Mary is the mother of God. Jesus is the son of God. And as God, as our brother Shorosh, as well as many Christians believe that he is God in human form, he is God incarnate. So, if they are such godly people, then they both had food. So if they had food, that means they had a call of nature. If you eat, you must look for the toilet sooner or later, or look for the bush or the rocks. It can't be helped. God Almighty doesn't tell you in those words, but listen to what he says. Unzur. See how we make our signs clear to you that they both had food. The implications of eating food. Unzur. See how we make our signs clear to you. Summanzur. Have another look. Look. Have another look. How they have deviated from the path gone away from the true path, attributing to God an animal nature, that he is like a man. We are made in his image. What image? This image? This is the monkey image. We are all glorified monkeys. Some look like chimpanzees, some like baboons, some like something else, you know, gorillas, all of us. We are all glorified monkeys. Is that the image God is talking about? <laughs> and the Christian says yes. Christian says yes. I said, God said in the book of Genesis, quoted by Dr. Shorosh, he said, and God said, let there be light. I said, did he say that with his mouth? He said, yes. Did he utter the words? He said, yes. So God has got a mouth? He said, yes. So if he's got a mouth, he must have teeth as well. Teeth, teeth. Can you imagine a toothless God, a God with a teeth? The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Can you imagine a God like that? So he says, no, he must have teeth. Yes, he's got teeth. Then I say, he's got a tongue. He said, he's got a tongue. 
Then he must have a larynx and the lungs. Are you serious? Then he's going to talk, 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 isn't it? The light, sun, moon, stars, millions of creation. He's talking, 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 talking. His mouth goes dry. So he must need liquid to lubricate. If this type of mouth he has, he must need some lubrication. No? He said, yes. So once that lubrication goes in, there must be an outlet as well. No? Can you imagine? What are you bringing God down to? An anthropomorphism. Very interesting. I was just thinking to myself that God's form is something that we can't even begin to describe. So to describe God as a human, don't you think that's being disrespectful? If you're really into religion, why do you think God should be human? Because if God is human and you're saying, okay, that human is God, that means you're a God too. That means I'm a God too. Should we start uh worshiping each other it doesn't make sense that people don't want to move away from this theory of jesus is god jesus has told you himself that he is not god but worship god why are you still so stuck on that it's just like the other day i said in one of my videos that um we can watch the same movie or read the same text or passage but how we interpret it is going to be different it's going to be very different from one another and it's really up to us to go in further to understand this um, thing that's very disputed in religion and just discover the information you can't learn something if you're just going to stick to one book there's plenty of books out there that you can learn from let me get to the second part of this <laughs> 